In this video, I'm going to take you through how to use the new warp projection mode that was added in Painter 7.3.1. To do that, first, I want to distort a sh simple shape, this arrow here, on a, a fill layers mask. So I'm going to create a new fill layer. I'll set this fill layer to red so that it's very obvious. I'm going to add a black mask to it. And then in this black mask, I'm going to add a fill. Why a fill? Because the warp projection mode only works with fill. I'll then take this alpha, drop it into that slot, and we can see it's visible right now on my tiling plane. So ignore the rest, I'm just gonna focus on this middle part to show you the warp basics. If I scroll up, I can set the projection mode from UV projection to warp projection. Now, if you zoom out a bit, you see that the warp projection mode is slightly strangely um, aligned right now. So there's an easy way to fix that. If you want to get it to appear correctly, you press the surface tool and the hotkey for that is shift W and just move it over the surface to get your warp to appear like that. Now it's still kind of big, so I'm going to press R for scale and I'm going to look at it from the top and scale my arrow down a bit like that. If you don't want this to repeat, you can also turn off the UV wrap to none, but in, in this case, it doesn't make uh, any difference because I'm using a tiling plane anyway. So what I'd like to do specifically to show you the warp basics is I want to bend this arrow slightly, like you know, a bend modifier that you would do in another 3D program or a 2D program. So once you set it to warp projection, there's a few things you can do. Um, the main one would be that if you click on the settings for the warp, so that's up here, you can set the grid, so I can set the number of rows, for example. I can unlock this as well, and I would actually like to have, um, let's say, four columns like that. Maybe let's go for three, that's a little easier. And I can change the handle size as well, so I can make those large. You can change the grid color, so it's a little bit difficult to see. So let me just set that to purple. That should make it just a little bit more visible. If you actually want to start modifying this uh, warp grid here, in a simple case, you set the subdivision settings here, and then you go into this drop-down menu next to it that lets you choose how to affect the warp. Right now I'm transforming the warp, so that means I get to move it around. But it gets really interesting once you go to edit vertices. This lets you actually select the vertices and modify them. So I can draw a selection frame like this, and then use the regular move tools just like you would work in 2D or 3D to select parts out. So I'm switching between the different tools with W, E, and R. I'm just gonna select a few of these, rotate this out, and move them like. So again, using E, moving these around, and just trying to get this aligned in a simple way. You can even move them individually by just dragging like that, right? So it gives me a little bit more control over it, like so. All right, let's push those out a bit more there. So that's a quicker way if you want to move individual points. Move these a bit closer as well. So that's a very simple way to use warp on a 2D shape. You can always switch back to regular moving of the warp as well by going into the transform warp up here. And then you can simply move the warped shape around like you did before. Now, that's a simple case. Let's move on to a more complex one to go a little bit more in depth. So I've got a new example open here. This is the uh, man that we used for the promotion of the warp feature. And it's a good example of when the warp really makes sense. So I have a scanned face from a website called Texturing XYZ. So this was scanned from a real person, comes with height maps and um, roughness maps. I have this sculpted face that was made by my coworker, Geo. Problem is that the proportions of the scanned face don't match the 3D sculpted face. And I'd still like to transfer them. And for that, warp is a perfect case to move things around. So let's set that up first. I'm gonna create a fill layer. I'm going to use my textures in the base color. And we'll take this and put that into the roughness. We will also put this part into the height. Now the height's a bit too strong. So I'm going to add a levels to the height, and I'm just going to really limit the output of that so the height isn't too strong. Next, let's change our projection settings. So we're using warp on a full material here. So I'm gonna change the projection to warp projection and set the UV wrap to none. If I zoom out a bit, the warp's kind of, it's gone. See, it's floating in 3D space here. I wanna get this into a good position first. So I'm gonna aim it 
somewhere towards the center of the face, right? So just in general, I like to get it what I think is about the center of the face, like that. Now the scale is all off. So what you want to do first is you want to scale this down so that you get the approximate proportions like that. So scale it down a bit more, something like that. And I want to do the same in that direction. You see, if I'm looking closely, you can start to see the issue now. The eyebrows are too low, the eyes aren't in the right position, the nose is too low, the mouth is a bit too low. So let's try and move it up a bit more. There we go. We still want to move this around quite a bit and wrap it around the face as well. So I'm happy with these proportions. Then the next thing I'm going to do is like before, go to edit vertices, I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to wrap them around all the way to the side. Probably try and get the ear aligned. Do the same for the other side. Take these and wrap them around until we get to a position where that kind of makes sense. And you see that there's a projection depth as well. There's a setting you can use to control this, right? It controls the length of the projection. I'll probably set this a bit deeper. It doesn't hurt to go a bit further. Okay, so we've got our basic setup. And one very important thing to keep in mind is we want to try and pull this off with as little points as possible. The more points you get, the harder it becomes to manage them. It's really interesting here as well is that if I grab one of these and use the quick move on them, it snaps to the surface immediately. See, so this is instantly snapping to the surface. So I'm going to do that for uh, each of the main points already. And see how they've sort of wrapped and got closer uh, together again, I'm gonna have to fix that at a later point. So I'll do the same thing here, move that about over there, move this a bit lower. So try and get in a good view and we'll place each of these on our guy. All right, we can do the same thing for this nose here, bring it up a bit. And you can see sometimes it gets a bit funky, right? So like this one's jumped away. So I can try and rotate that one a bit to bring it back. But yeah, it's just acting a bit strange. So I'm going to have to cut some extra um, loops in here to fix this up. So if you click here, you can use this to split the warp horizontal and vertically. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add some vertical splits. So I'm going to split the warp vertically, add one there. And you have to select it again each time you want to do it. So split warp vertically, add one there. Then I'm going to go back into edit vertices and bring these to the surface and get them into like a good position, right? So you can use these to stretch it out, pull this around and try and get like semi-decent proportion. So pulling that in there and this one we want to move on the face as well. Right, so we definitely want to add another horizontal cut over here to get it closer to the face. So we're going to do the same thing, split warp horizontally. And I try and estimate by like using the surface normal to see that it goes about in the middle of the mouth, like so. And then I'm just going to snap this back. If the rotation is strange, remember, you can always simply use the rotate tool to rotate this out. You don't have to use the surface snapping. The regular move is fine for this as well. So we'll get that into that position. Okay, so we're getting closer. Things are getting aligned, but we'll have to add a few more. So we definitely want to add a cut around the eyes to do those. So again, split warp vertically and trying to estimate where they're actually going to end up. So after quite a bit of tweaking, this isn't exactly a fast process. This is what I ended up with. So I've tried to make sure to align the nose properly, the eyes are aligned, the eyebrows are aligned, the mouth is aligned okay as well. And I had to add an extra cut around these two to get more control. It's still not completely there. So one tip I can give you is don't start adding more points to a specific section like the mouth just to get that one thing to align properly. What you would do is create another layer where we simply cropped out the mouth. So you can see this here, the mouth. And the mouth is then a separate warp projection that goes on top. And the mouth simply has a mask. See, we've painted out a mask where the mouth appears and it blends over the top and allows me to move it in a better position. So key areas like the mouth, the eyes, or even the nose, 
You could do those with a separate projection where you take the same texture, and this was cropped out in Adobe Photoshop, just align it and do it separately. No point in making your grid for the entire face so dense that you can't move it anymore. So just use a separate one to get things aligned like that. Also, one tip is if you go into the warp settings, it can get a bit busy with these normals. So you can turn these off right now as well. This makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to work with, especially if you turn on the vertices, just a little bit easier to see what's going on as well. So there's that setting, show normals. That's it for this video. I hope this helps you get started. Keep in mind, warp projection needs a fill. Don't use too many points and make use of the shortcuts like W, E, and R and a drag to move across the surface. Good luck with it.